My 2019 Ford Mustang GT convertible is the first car I've owned with both heated and cooled seats. I've had several cars with heated seats, and I've always imagined that there was an electrical heating element sandwiched between the seat covers and the cushions, which heats up when you apply an electric current, like a sports heating pad, a heated side view mirror, or the burner on an electric stove. So I always took the science of heated seats for granted. Now, I can't tell you how many times I've gone on a long drive on a hot day, only to arrive with my shirt back soaked in sweat, despite running the car's air conditioner. So I was excited at the prospect of getting a car with heated and cooled seats, and I knew the Mustang seats were also ventilated, meaning there was airflow coming out of the perforations of the cushions. And if you've ever driven a convertible top down on a hot sunny day, you know that you can heat up quickly when the car is not moving. And running the air conditioner nonstop with the top down is not a good idea. Enter the concept of cooled and ventilated seats, a perfect combination for a leather upholstered convertible. If you are considering buying a vehicle with an option of heated and cooled ventilated seats, the first question you'll probably want answered is, do they work? The easy answer is yes, but I'm going to take it a step further and show you with some thermal imaging. When you turn on the seat heater or cooling, the first thing you notice is the sound of a fan, which is not present in any of my cars that just have heated seats. It makes sense that since the seats are ventilated, that there are fans embedded in the seat bottoms and backs that blow air and that indeed was what I was hearing. In the winter, the heated seats are a pleasure. In some of my previous cars, only the seat bottoms were heated. In the Mustang, you can feel the heat on your back as well, and the moving ventilated air distributes the heat very nicely. Here's the seats set to the coldest position. I'm going to time-lapse the film so you could see it cool down, and you can clearly see that there is a cooler in the seat bottom and the seat back. It works. A quick peek under the seats lets you see the seat blower, but I was puzzled by the lack of connections to the car's HVAC or more specifically, I was expecting, at the very least, an air conditioning hose coming from the car's AC unit under the hood. But there was no such connection, only a small electronic box that was connected a few inches away from the blower motor. Was it possible that this little black box was cooling and perhaps heating my seats? And if so, how is this possible? The first answer is yes, the entire assembly is called a few different things by Ford. The Temperature Controlled Seat Blower Assembly, or the CCS, Climate Controlled Seat Blower Air Vent. Generically, it is called a Seat Climate Control Unit, and the way it works is fascinating. The black box in the CCS is a type of thermoelectric device, or TED. Simply stated, when you apply an electrical current to the thermoelectric device, one side of the TED gets cold and the other side gets hot. If you reverse the polarity of the electricity, then the opposite sides of the TED get hot and cold without anything mechanical changing. This isn't magic, and in fact, the thermoelectric effect that makes seat heaters and coolers in cars today work was actually discovered and published in 1834 by French physicist Jean-Charles Athenaise Pelletier, and is in fact known as the Pelletier effect. While Pelletier also researched and published other science subjects like atmospheric electricity, water spouts, the polarization of light in the sky, and the boiling point of water at high elevations, he is most known for the thermoelectric principles that bears his name. Here's how it works. First, a little background about electricity. I assume you know what a conductor is. 
And this piece of copper wire is a great example of a conductor. Any energy that you feed into one end is passed almost entirely out the other end with little or no resistance. An insulator, on the other hand, like the rubber handles on tools or the ceramic standoffs on telephone and power poles, does not conduct electricity. A semiconductor is a material that's somewhere between a conductor and an insulator. It allows some electricity through, but has resistance. Now imagine that you have two different materials, both that semiconduct electricity, but both with different resistances. Peltier's research showed that if you mate the two differently conducting materials together and pass an electrical current through them, that at the junction of where the two materials meet, you can generate hot or cold. If you take these two semiconductor materials and make an alternating surface out of them, and if you apply an electrical current, then one side of the thermoelectric device will get cold while the other side heats up. And by simply reversing the polarity, you can flip which side is cold and which side is hot, giving you the ability to cool or heat an object like a car seat with a single, simple, solid-state device. Now all you need is a fan to draw the air over the TED and distribute it, and you have a self-contained compact unit that can be built right into your car seats. Well, that may have been a little bit more information than you were expecting from the video's title, but I hope you found the subject interesting and possibly, like me, a little eye-opening. If you're in the market for a new car, then I wholeheartedly recommend you take a look at the feature with heated and cooled ventilated seats. And if you already have a non-climate controlled car seat, you may be interested in knowing that there are aftermarket conversion kits available. I'm Mike, and my channel is called Mike Fixed It. If you enjoyed this video, then please click the thumbs up button. And if you're new or don't want to miss any of my future videos, then please subscribe and turn on your post notifications. Sharing this video is not required, but it would be sincerely appreciated. And by all means, please leave your comments in the space below. Be good, be well, and be safe. And thank you for watching. I fixed it.